Hello everyone, this is the first status on the progress of my modular diagonale mock. If you don't know what I am talking about, you can check the video where I presented the project, link in the description below. At the moment I am recording this video, I have invested in it a total of 10 hours. I haven't done a huge amount of progress, but I have passed through some stepping stones that are important regarding the process, and that is what these videos are all about. So, it's a good time for me to show you what I have, and especially how I got here. I'm now starting to go hands-on on my modular diagonally project. The first thing is to choose which building I would start transforming into a modular building, since they are open in the rear. And the winner was this building with Ollivanders and Scribulous shops for several reasons. On the exterior, I only need to extend the walls and add a, a rear flat wall. Also, the rooftop is a terrace, which is much easier to extend. And I noticed that there's a stair missing because we don't have access to the apartment above the Scribulous shop, but that will be also easy to add. In terms of interior, both shops have what it's expected of them. A lot of wands in Ollivanders, quills and ink in the Scribulous shop. So it's just a question to decide which things I want to add to occupy the additional space. The big decision was made and it was time to start. But before I got my hands dirty, some preparation was needed. I got a big storage box to keep the project dust free when I'm not working on it. And some plastic boxes with divisions to keep the parts nicely stored. Then I opened the second diagonally Lego set and the bags of the Scribblers and Ollivanders one shop and split the parts by type, storing them on the plastic boxes. Then I was ready to go. So this is the point of no return. I will start disassembling the building, starting by splitting the several floors. Let's see how that goes. I have now finished splitting the ground floor from the first floor from the rooftop. It was not too hard to do, but it was not very easy either. I already found out that I will have some challenges here, mostly because the place where is the split between floors has a one plate of difference between Ollivanders and Scribulus. So at Ollivanders, I just can't remove this one. This is the place to do the split. On Scribulus, I would probably need another layer here, but it will have an impact on the Scribulus side if I do that. So I will need to figure out a way to do it. Also, as you can see here on this side, there's only one layer one plate layer for the ground of the first floor and usually in modulars you you need two layers in here you don't have it because you have these beams ensuring that the plates have a very steady place where to get stuck but if i grow this building and for good access i will need to remove these beams then the second layer of plates to make the ground steady will be uh, crucial and I can't go without that, so that will be a challenge. Also the rooftop, as you can see, there's two different heights in the two parts of the rooftop. So either I keep them separate and I will have 
two different rooftops to cover the first floor of the modular or I will need to find a lower cut for the Ollivander's rooftop to make sure that I can have the two rooftops with different heights in the same um, building. Also, I found out that there are these little pieces that put together the first floor with the rooftop in the Ollivander's building and it's not really an option to remove them because the facade would be a bit different and I really really want to keep the facade designed by Lego. It seems the biggest challenge will be how to build a way to easily attach and remove the first floor from the ground floor, modular style. But all in due time, because to be able to test the solution for the connection between the two floors, first I need to have the full walls of the ground floor. So I need to define the size and shape of those walls, which means I also need to think about the interior decoration of both shops. At that point, I decided to do some research. It's always a good idea when you're trying to reproduce or base your work on something that exists, even if only in fiction. My search for the Scribulous shop interior came out empty. But for Ollivanders, there's a great scene from the first Harry Potter movie when Harry gets his wand. I'll link that in the description. Comparing the setting in that scene with the interior of the shop in the Lego set, it was quite obvious how much the designers had to compromise to fit the one shop into the size of the half modular. With the extra space I have, I can make all the vendors much closer to the movie version. Let's see how that is going. So this is currently the status of my mock. It's still pretty raw. I added the 16 by 32 base plate and started playing around. I moved the counter from the side to the front of the door and moved the stairs to the right side near the wall. I had to change the guardrail from one side to the other. And I added an additional table here. All of these you can see in the footage of the Harry Potter movie. On the Scribblers shop, I extended the shelves with the ink and quills. But then the store would be very unbalanced, so I created these little scrolls here and decided to sell them on the shop. Uh, and after playing around a bit, I decided to display them on a chest. I then toyed around a bit with the stairs. I tried to have them inside the store, but the store is really thin and the stairs are really big. And really, the first floor of the Scribblers shop doesn't have to be connected with the shop itself, so I decided to have the stairs on the exterior. But then I had a problem with the place where I was putting the rear wall, because then the stairs would be on top of either the door or covering any window that I decided to put here. So the solution was to push the rear wall a bit to the inside, reducing the size of the Scribblers shop. But with what we have there, I think that it's not a problem and um, actually I think that having the rear walls of the two shops in uh, different positions adds some interest to the rear of the building. I also had some issue to solve here that I decided to do it now. Uh, this was a 2x4 plate so the studs here would be a problem when I decided to put in the first floor. So I changed this 2x4 plate into 2x2 two two plates with only two studs to fit in this 1x4 tile and I think I solved that problem. So right now I'm struggling a bit with lack of parts in the right colors or uh, lack of parts at all. The second diagonally set is not being enough so I need to figure out what to do next. As I started trying to bring my ideas to life, 
it became obvious that the lack of some parts is just slowing me down. And the second diagonally LEGO set is not helping as much as I expected. So it's time to go virtual and jump into stud.io, which is a free digital tool that allows you to design and build with LEGO bricks. This seems to be a pattern from the few mocks that I have done so far. I always need to start playing with the physical bricks to get a grip on what I want to build. But once I have a clear picture of what I want, it's much easier to do it in stud.io, where I have infinite bricks of all the existing colors and building and rebuilding is much quicker and easier. This is how far I've got after investing 10 hours. So what do you think about my progress? Would you have done something different? Just use and abuse the comment section below. As always, I appreciate your thumbs ups. It's the way for this content to reach more people. If you want to be notified whenever I release a new video about this project and the steps that I'm taking to succeed in it, clicking the bell sign is the way to go. Until the next one, stay safe and keep building.